astronomy, the study of everything that is beyond our blue sky, through which humanity tries to break the boundaries of our knowledge and understanding of the world and strives to understand what is beyond. And yet, in this study, which reveals the uniformity of the universe, an imbalance exists. The men have always dominated the research in astronomy, as they have in most other scientific and technical fields. This definitely does not mean that the other half of the Earth's population is sitting idly, letting their brothers, sons and husbands study. Through the ages, women have been somewhat invisible but active participants in the astronomical research. Jocelyn Bell Burnell was the first person to discover pulsars in 1967 while working with her advisor Anthony Hewish. Pulsars are rotating neutron stars, blinking like giant lighthouses in the sky. Even though the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1974 was awarded to Anthony Hewish, Jocelyn Bell Burnell's contributions in physics were recognized by the Special Breakthrough Prize Committee. In a very kind act, she decided to use her award money to improve the diversity of underrepresented groups such as women in science. Have you heard of dark matter? Uh, Vera Rubin was one of the astronomers who worked on the rotation of the galaxies. In her studies, she could find strong evidence for dark matter. Dark matter is a kind of a matter which cannot be seen, but we can observe its effects on the rotation of the galaxies. Motivated by her own battle, uh, gaining credibility as a, as a female astronomer, she encouraged all the girls interested in investigating universe to pursue their dreams. Carolyn Shoemaker is an American astronomer. So uh, she was she is known after uh, the discovery of the comet named after her, uh, known as the Shoemaker Levy 9. She has discovered more than 800 asteroids and 32 comets. She, along with her husband Jimmy, were awarded the Rittenhouse Medal in 1988 and was also the recipient of the Scientist of the Year Award in 1995. Wanda Diaz-Mercy is a very well-known astronomer today. However, only a few years back, she was an aspiring astronomer who lost her eyesight, but that did not stop her from pursuing astronomy. Instead, she developed a brilliant new technique of converting observational data sets into sound, now known as sonification. Using this technique, she was able to extract new information from astronomy data sets that was less obvious to visual astronomers. Thanks to her, now astronomers from all over the world can look at astronomy data sets in a new light. Let's now take a brief look at a few Indian women astronomers who are currently in senior positions. Dr. S. Sita is the program director of ISRO's Space Science Program Office and she has played a vital role in almost all of ISRO's space science projects. Professor Chanda Jog from IAC Bangalore has won the Homi Bhava Medal for Physical Sciences for her work on galaxies. Professor Pushpa Hare from Utkal University, Orissa continues to solve mysteries of distant galaxies. Professor Prajwal Shastri from IIA Bangalore is an expert on active galactic nuclei. Professor G.C. Anupama is involved in TMT, an international mega science project, and is going to be the next president of ASI. Professor Annapurni Subramaniam is known for her work on star clusters and is also involved in AstroSat, an important Indian satellite dedicated to astronomy. These are names of just a few women who have dedicated their lives to astronomy in the 20th century. But history has seen many remarkable women and their groundbreaking contributions to this field of study. Around 2nd to 1st century BC, a Greek astronomer Aglaonis could roughly predict the time and location of lunar eclipse. Because of this, she was called the sorcerers who could make moon disappear from the sky. The other astronomer is Maria Kunitz. She was one of the notable astronomers in the modern era. In 1650, she wrote a book called Urania Propitia, in which she provided an elegant solution for the Kepler's problem. Caroline Herschel happened to be an equally hardworking sister of Sir William Herschel. She helped him to build his large and powerful telescopes and went on to become the first woman to discover a comet on 1st August 1786. She discovered several comets later and a periodic comet 35P Herschel Rigolet bears her name. 
She also created a catalogue of nebulae and clusters, which was published by Royal Astronomical Society in 1798 under William's name. Later on, new objects were added to it and it is renamed as New General Catalogue. She was the first woman to be awarded gold medal from Royal Astronomical Society in 1828. Annie Jump Cannon is also an American astronomer. She was instrumental in the development of the stellar classification that we know today. She manually classified more than 350,000 stars. She was a deaf throughout her adulthood. Despite this physical disability, she could make a big contribution in the field of astronomy. Along with Annie Jump Cannon, Henrietta Swan Leavitt was also recruited by the Harvard College Observatory in 1903 to work as a human computer cataloging stars depending on their brightness. It was her work that established that there is a relationship between their luminosity to their period. Her work formed the platform of the famous Hubble's law which says that the universe is expanding. Her work also said helped us actually to understand the distances of far away galaxies from our galaxy. Hi Pesha, Leelawati, Maria Mitchell, Annie Maunder, the list is long but incomplete. There are probably many names which were never recognized in their time and forgotten afterwards, but their work lives on. Today, our knowledge is based on the strong foundation of the astronomical research carried out for centuries by men and women alike. So imagine if you want to actually choose this, you know, academia career, it means that you need to actually have some tough, uh, some tough time during the graduate school. And after that, you will spend, you know, a few years being postdoc. And after that, you will have, you know, another full five years of full of, you know, stress to be a ten tenure track. So it would be really hard, you know, some, some women actually to choose to, to stay with their families, to raise their kids. So they wouldn't go for this kind of, you know, stressful career. So the only solution for that is actually if, you know, the scientific society can provide some opportunities for, for these women to actually come back to science again. After this, you know, a few years of interruption, so she can start over and pursue their, their career, you know, after that. Gender bias is something that is not confined to the field of academia. It actually exists in various other aspects of the society as well. Suppose boys are our right hands and girls are our left hands. On one hand, we are training our right hands to fight with a sword, making it stronger and stronger. But we forget that it's the left hand which holds the shield against a sword coming down on us. So let's make our left hand stronger and capable of fighting when the right hand is not working properly. What can females do uh, against this bias is that they should stand up when they themselves face bias. Secondly, they should uh, support each other when the situation comes. Thirdly, as mentors, as female researchers, as mothers, they should do their part and support other females. Women's representation in astronomy has grown by half from 11% in early 1940s to 17% today. A few years ago, a working group for gender equity was set up at Astronomical Society of India under the guidance of former Ayuka director, Professor Ajit Kembhavi. In future, more and more women should be facilitated and incorporated in the decision-making process and offered exclusive fellowships and scholarships at early and later stages of their career to bring and keep them in the field of astronomy. We have just seen that there are just a few names, few Indian women who are there in the world platform representing India in science and astronomy. We want you to be one of them and bring our names to the world platform. <laughs>